Hey there, everybody. It's Mike Yao with Savage Kingdom's role-playing game, Fire in the Head Productions, that sort of thing. It's been a while. I have not done a video in um, several weeks, I think. And um, I started doing one about a week and a half ago, and for some reason there was some weird technical stuff. But anyway, that video was supposed to be about Scathia, continuing in the Savage Kingdoms of the West series, where I go over all these sort of different cultures and that sort of thing, uh, the human ones, and then I will probably get to the non-human ones, maybe. So, not a lot of views on these things, uh, so I'm just kind of doing them and putting them out there, really just as kind of an archive for anybody who wants to, maybe they, they decide to play a Scathian character, a character from Scathia, or Laurentia, or... Uh, Kimrith or wherever other places that I've covered uh, or have yet to cover in the Savage Kingdoms of the West, they could just look it up and say, cool, he actually did a video about it and it uh, told me a little bit more about it than just what's in the core rule book. Speaking of core rule book, here we are. We'll be on page, well, at least we'll be starting on page whatever that is, 39. I'm trying to read it backwards here. Uh, 39. So this is about Scathia also. Uh, pronounced Scathia. Um, I've kind of gone back and forth on the official pronunciation, uh, but like a lot of things in my world building, I like to kind of, I, I like uh, I like language and I like to play with it, and I think it's more realistic when sometimes you have names of things that aren't quite exactly agreeable. Uh, we have plenty of words in the English language, for example, that's exactly like that, that uh, there's really not uh, a often in an official way. It depends on the dialect or, and that sort of thing, or maybe the uh, era of the language. So, um, right. So we will start with Scathia or Scathia. Uh, the inspiration for the, the name Scathia actually comes from Scandinavia. That might be somewhat obvious as I tweak the computer and goof around and that sort of thing. Uh, so it's Scathia, that's, uh, uh, but then, you know, like uh, some people might say Scathia. Either one is fine. But I typically do Scathia, and I will probably stick with that for the video. All right. So the Savage Kingdom of Scathia. Scathia, the Scathians are a playable race. Obviously, all these videos that I've done um, are uh, player character uh, playable uh, races and uh, or cultures. So I will read from the book here. It's just a couple of paragraphs of fluff before you get to the game mechanics. The blonde and blue-eyed humans of Scathia are among the most civilized of northern folk, even they were often raiding foreign shores not a century ago. Yet they have per per uh, persevered and advanced, all the while becoming casual enemies of Malovia beyond their southern borders. They revere the sun goddess Signa above all other gods, even Fragner, and have begun to develop a crude early medieval-esque society. Otherwise, Scathians are somewhat akin to the Swedes or, or Northern Germans of our real world's late Dark Ages or early Middle Ages eras. More information about Scathia and its people can be located in a brief gazetteer, which I think is chapter 6 of the book later on, which I will get to um, momentarily. So going back to the end of that first paragraph, um, notice it said, the Scathians revere the sun god of Sigma, blah, 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 even Fragner, blah, 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 and have begun to develop a crude early medieval esque society. So I think that's kind of important because remember, this is a Dark Ages kind of uh, inspired setting. It even kind of says it on the front of the book. And uh, there's many examples through the book, including particularly equipment and gear uh, that seems to lend it more to the Dark Ages and even to the uh, age, ages of an antiquity to uh, compare it to our, uh, or the classical age to compare it to our real world history. Uh, so um, the Scathians are kind of getting into um, kind of like Eridorn would be another, another example, or Tarnia in the East, which I eventually hopefully will get to in these uh, videos, uh, develop, developing a uh, more early Middle Ages uh, era. Uh, or just kind of coming out of the Dark Ages, uh, so to speak. So, just want to comment on that. Uh, and like it says, they are kind of modeled after the, uh, the Scandinavians, but in particular the Swedes, or even the Northern Germans. So, because uh, when I play my Scythian NPCs, I tend to do sort of a Nordic accent, but occasionally it'll sort of go into German like this. So whatever. I try not to make it comical. So, um... That's where it's coming from. For those of you who have heard me do the voices of Scathian NPCs, now you know why I do that. Anyway, allowable callings, moving along, allowable callings. Uh, those would be bard, berserker, craftsman, gladiator, healer, hunter, knight, merchant, noble, pirate, 
sage, seer, shaman, sorcerer, thief, witch. So all those are allowable. Um, again, uh, Game Master can allow whatever. You can say, I'm a samurai, Scathian. Uh, maybe. Uh, a little weird, but I think with a really cool backstory, um, they would totally, fur uh, to totally work. So whatever that word is that I just tried to say, furk. Uh, so it could be a um, person who's ethnically Scathian that was raised in uh, Taikonara, or Yanakan, if I'm using the samurai example. Um, a child found, delivered to one of the monasteries and was raised in that culture or whatever. Um, uh, or vice versa. It could be a uh, samurai who the son of a samurai who was raised in Scathia or maybe captured by Scathians and then just kind of adapted their culture. So anyway, uh, but for the most part, allowable callings are exactly what it says right there. Uh, attribute array. So kind of like in the other videos, I'll just sort of go over what the main, like the, the three highest, like the three attributes that Scathians are most notable for as far as positive. That would be um, physique, magnetism, and willpower. So in other words, those three can start at a maximum of plus four uh, at character creation when you're arranging your attributes, uh, and they can max out uh, at plus six, uh, they can, and they can start as low as minus two. So the other three, agility, vigor, and intellect, are they're sort of the average ones that uh, starting minimum is negative three, starting maximum is plus three, and absolute max is plus five. Okay. Special abilities, um, like... Like all the human cultures, there are two sort of special abilities, kind of like uh, special abilities beyond the skill specialties, which I'll get to in a second. Uh, and, th and these would be the two that I, uh, the two special abilities as we're calling them. Uh, cold tolerance. Scathian characters gain a plus one bonus to endurance skill rolls when resisting cold or ice effects. Uh, they also ha have something called hardiness. Scathians also receive a plus one bonus to endurance rolls when resisting diseases due to a generally healthy lifestyle and a cool climate. And they eat lots of white fish up there, too. It's good. Uh, all right. And then skill specialties. So like all the other human cultures, Scathian characters receive three free skill specialties of character creation that help reflect Scathian culture and virtues. Uh, and I won't list them all, um, but there are, look to be 11 choices, so 11 different skills that you can choose specialties within. Um, I'll just grab the first, uh, first few. So animal handling, uh, your choice would be cattle, dogs, or swine. Uh, skip down a little bit. Crafting, uh, blacksmithing, carpentry, or leather. Uh, lore, history, or religion. Uh, sailing, boats, boats in general, boats as in small craft, not ships. Um, Drakkar, which are like long, larger long ships that are usually uh, serve as more like cargo ships than warships. Uh, where, where did I leave off? Or rivers, uh, specialties of sailing. Uh, let's do the weapons really quick. Um, weaponry, melee specialty choices would be hand axes, long swords, pole axes, pole arms, spear, spears, or warhammers. So, uh, Savage Kingdoms three pole arm is a Fairly broad category. Instead of like taking the time to break Halbert out and Beck de Corbin and Polax and all this stuff, I just kind of made it uh, a generic polearm stat. Uh, and, you, and even Great Spear is considered a polearm or pike. Uh, and that's not completely inaccurate as far as realism goes. I mean, once you once you get to a long pole weapon, the main function is for reach uh, or to stand together in a phalanx. Um, a brace, a brussel of spears and pikes, as it were, uh, and and their damaging dealing capabilities were pretty similar. They all, you know, they had different functions and stuff. Halberds were to drag riders off of horses or cut the horses' legs out, uh, stuff like that. But in general, that was just an easy way to do it. So pole arm really means kind of great spear. It means all pole arms. Uh, weaponry ranged. Uh, they can choose as a specialty: javelins, longbows, slings, or thrown hand axe. Those are your free skill specialties at character creation. You don't even need a skill level in those. That's just a cultural thing. Uh, growing up with that culture, you're probably going to have been around the, those kind of weapons a good bit. And uh, being in a culture that is very militia-based, that doesn't really have a prof professional army, uh, able-bodied men and able-bodied women at time as well, which is kind of um, 
they all serve as sort of the town guard for the matter. It's a, it is a war cult, warlike culture, uh, but it is the least, the Scathians, it is the least warlike culture of the sort of northern um, Nordic-esque cultures that are in the setting, of which there are three, uh, and really four if you claim the, the Thraki. The Thrakians are kind of beyond that. Uh, they're kind of, <laughs> or below that, maybe some might say. Uh, they're kind of very early scanning. Uh, they're like Neanderthal, uh, Neanderthal is the real way to pronounce it, but Neanderthal we now say nowadays. Uh, and um, kind of a mix of Conan's, uh, the Conan, uh, Conan's people, the Sumerians or Chimerians. Uh, so yeah, so they're a little more fantastical. All right, that was just a slight aside. So, <laughs> continue on with the Scathian stuff. Favorite talents. Um, like all the other videos, I will not read all of these because I don't want the video dragging on forever, but I'll grab a few of them. Uh, favorite talents, favorite battle talents, uh, back to back, uh, bullish charge, crushing blow, fending stance, honor duel, haft and staff, uh, retaliating strike, shattering blow, shield rush, shield wall, tripping, tripping attack, warning shot. And there was, there are a few more as well, but like I said, I didn't want to read them all. Favorite blood talents, giant blood, trollborn. Those are the two favored of, uh, in other words, you pay one point less uh, if you were a Scathian. Mystical Talents, favored mystical talents. Uh, Acolyte of Cigna, which is the uh, sun goddess, like it, like it said earlier in the paragraph. Um, it's sort of the patron deity of Scathia, Cigna is, uh, even more so than Fragner, who is kind of worshipped um, above all the others uh, and all the other sort of northern cultures other than uh, the Thraki who uh, believe in Torak but don't necessarily really worship him uh, in the traditional sense of the word. Uh, other mystical talents, counter magic, enchant talisman, extended extended ritual, herbal magic, priest or priest, priestess of Signa, rune magic, sacred oath, second sight, song magic. Uh, favorite social talents, artisan, Bard or Scald, as it was would be called in the north, bodyguard, champion, comeliness, gift of tongues, mariner, merchant, militia, mountaineer, squire, and woodsman. Right. Um, subterfuge, uh, lampoon, and privateer, the only two favorite talents uh, for Scythians in the subterfuge category. Uh, and then finally, the other category, the uh, miscellaneous category of talents is uh, fire in the head, grit, Healer's Touch, Inspiring Presence, Pious Faith, Tireless, and Valorous. There you go. All right, moving right along to favored weaknesses. Uh, Scathian's favored weaknesses are, in other words, you gain an, a, 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 an extra point, an extra bonus point if you choose a favored weakness, something that they're a little more known for. Um, addiction to White Lotus. Yes, White Lotus, even White Lotus, the sort of good and healing lotus can be uh, addictive. Uh, enemy. Uh, your choice of enemy would be Bandit King, a Bandit King, a Malovian Noble, or Thraki Chieftain. You could choose another enemy, but if you choose one of those, then you get the, the favorite part of that kicks in. You get the bonus point. Uh, Oathbound, Obsession, uh, Obsession uh, uh, with Honor or the Sea, Too Tall, and Zealot of Signa. This is one very zealous and uh, hyper-religious. Starting languages. Scathian is your native tongue, which is both spoken and written. You also begin with one of the following languages as well as if, if your intellect is minus one or higher. Malovian, Korite, Dwergar, Giant Speak, or Giant Speech, uh, or Old Volkari. So Malovian, Korite, Dwergar. Uh, some people say Dwergar and others say Dwergar. I actually ran a language check on that, by the way. I, I, I do try to research this stuff when I can. And uh, as an actor, I use this sort of uh, uh, accent program that's really kind of cool. It's like, uh, I can't even remember the name of it, but it's a whole database of accents and dialects from all around the world. And that's, that's how you kind of learned a, uh, it helps me anyway to learn a dialect when I'm playing a uh, cast as a character that's uh, not using my own sort of dialect, which is American with a very faint southeastern accent probably north carolina in specific um so anyway that um program the pronunciation of dwergar and durgar are both correct they're just uh, regional kind of like what i said at the beginning of the video how strange uh so for example in finland it was i think they said dwergar it was almost more like that and then in uh, nor nor uh, norwegian it was it was dwergar which is how i usually say it uh, and then I think it was even Durgar at like Sweden or something like that. Anyway, 
they're obviously all very close and you could tell they're linguistically related, certainly, uh, but just a slight different pronunciation. I thought that was interesting. Side note uh, on Giant Speak. So Old Volcari, uh, uh, Old Volcari is, uh, or, or just, it would have been just called Volcari back in the day, but uh, if I put the word old in front of a language and just to let you everybody know in general in Savage Kingdoms, uh, that means it's a language that's fall out of favor. It's really hardly ever used anymore. Um, so only a few people probably speak it and write it. It wasn't really probably written except for maybe like some very basic runes that only maybe scalds and maybe a, a priest of Fragner might know. So Ovalkari was the original language of the uh, Scathian uh, people. There were two kind of Nordic sort of Northern European races that were called the Volcari and the Drakar, and they might have actually once all just been one as well, but I've left that open actually to every GM's interpretation. So Volcari and Drakar, or, or the Volcari and the Draks are the two sort of Nordic peoples. So the Scathians supposedly uh, descended mostly from the Volcari, and that's why that's an option. Side note. Sample names, Eric, Gunther, Lars, Osric, Sven, Thorvald, and, uh, or Thorvald, uh, and Wolfric. Those are male, obviously. Uh, Astrid, Erika, Ingrid, Hilda, Rifkin, Siegfried, and Thora, or Thora, is uh, your female uh, sample names. Like most Northmen, Scathians do not have proper surnames, say for their own noble house, but instead make use of son of or daughter of schematics or some kinning earned over time. Uh, my wife is returning, by the way, so if you, if you hear some skulking in the background. Hi, babe. Uh, <laughs> and my cats are napping. So, uh, where was I? Son of or daughter of uh, type names. So, for example, you might be Eric, son of Gunther, or uh, Hilda, uh, daughter of Astrid, or Hilda, Astrid's daughter. Um, and then they often like to use a lot of kinnings. Uh, kinning is just, of course, a fancy word kind of for an, an epithet or a nickname, such as the tall or dwergar friend. So you could be Eric Guntherson the tall, or Ingrid Hilda's daughter, uh, dwergar friend. Uh, so it not only tells you who you're the son or daughter of, but it almost tells a little story about you. Um, ancient names are really cool. I kind of hate that we got away from some of that stuff. Um, all right, so cultural item. You may choose one of the following items of character creation, or two by spending a luck point to complement the rest of your gear. Pretty standard, like all the other um, human and non-human racial options as well. Uh, I'll just go. For, I'll just grab a few of them really quick instead of all of them. There's like nine or ten choices, like it typically is with every um, playable race option. Uh, preserved white lotus petals uh, grants you plus two to healing arch rolls for three doses or uses that you can start with. Uh, Copper sun and hearth uh, sigil of Signa. So Signa's uh, the goddess Signa. Her symbol is often just kind of a red sun. And since that's very vague, sometimes uh, you might see um, there's a sun over a hearth sigil, which is also kind of another holy symbol of hers. Uh, and that would grant you plus one to magical art life rolls for ritual spells. Uh, two silver tipped arrows is an option. Silver plated knife, ancient scroll scribed in Scathian is an option. Uh, gives you plus one to herbalism or lore rolls your choice. Uh, so there's like lore in the scroll with some secrets is what that represents. A white wolf or arctic bear pelt. Well, hi, kitty. My wife is coming home. My black and white cat is waking up. The world is coming to life, even though it's like mid-afternoon. Um, white wolf or arctic bear pelt. Plus one to nurse rolls or resist cold or ice when worn. A piece of mammoth tusk with a crude design is another option. Um, a drinking horn of exceptional quality. Cold iron hand axe. Yeah, those are your options. I actually went through all the options, even though I said I wouldn't. Do it. General Code of Honor. Honor and obey the Scathian High Queen, who is usually the High Priestess of Signa. So traditionally in Signan history, or not Signan, well, Signan history as well, but uh, Scathian history, um, it's been sort of a thing over the last 300 years in Scathia that the High Volga, which is just the Grand High Priestess of the entire uh, sect of Signa, at least in regards to the Kingdom of Scathia, uh, she ascends the throne as Queen as well. So the Scathians are very trusting with uh, putting all that power into one position, a high priest, the high priestess and the queen. Uh, of course, they're really thinking the opposite. They're thinking that by the time you're uh, in uh, a high Vol Volga, you're extremely wise. You know how to uh, 
uh, tend to not only social power, but also probably magical power as well. And you know how to kind of unite the physical world, the spiritual world, and mental world all together. So that's really actually their thinking. So, right. Um, honor and respect all priestesses of Signa and all priests and lore keepers besides. So in other words, uh, definitely priestesses of Signa you respect, but anyone else of a similar position of really any kind of priest uh, or lore keeper is also held in high regard in Scythia. Um, because they really like their scalds or bards as well. Honor, honor and respect your family, clan, and tribe, and moreover, it's Jarl or Chieftain. So there you go. Seek diplomacy before combat, for the need for civility outshines needless violence. So again, one of the, um, and some of the other uh, Nordic-based uh, cultures, they would almost, uh, a lot of them might seek uh, single combat right off the bat. Um, so you can see the Scathians are getting sort of more, quote, unquote, civilized. Uh, with their code of honor here. So they would rather uh, seek diplomacy. Uh, but they won't shy away. If it comes down to, to, to combat, then yeah, they're they're there. Trust not a pirate or thief and seek always to bring such outlaws to justice. Uh, avenge serious insults only and then only by single, single combat or acceptance of apology. So it, it kind of just went over that a little bit. So that's the last one. Uh, so, so single combat or acceptance of apology is uh, the way that you would... Uh, avenge an insult, but preferably a public apology or a gift giving. All right, and that covers the entry for Scathians. Uh, we ended up on this page right here with the Thrakian guy on it, but um, which will be the next video, actually, and that'll be the end of the human cultures of Astagonia of the West. Um, I think I showed you guys. Here's our Scathian. Oh yeah, I did show this. Okay, that's our uh, uh, Scathian artwork representing our our uh, Scathian character there. So, all right, now I'm going to the Gazetteer section of the book, which is the big old chapter that uh, a lot of people like. I'm not sure it really gets read a lot, but a lot of people seem to comment that they really like it. So, yeah, there it is. Um, so here is a map of Scathia or Scathia. Yeah, so Scathia, right, sir? And that is an insert map. So in the Gazetteer, all the uh, kingdoms and territories and realms and uh, some of the other geographical areas have these little insert maps. Uh, that theme will continue in the Savage East book, by the way, as well, which um, I just kind of uh, basically unofficially signed off on uh, earlier today, a couple hours before doing this video, which is really what kind of inspired me to do it. I got sort of in a Savage Kingdoms uh, uh, mood today, and um, otherwise I was just going to chill out and wait for the beginning of Tech Week for a show that I have opening Friday. All right, so Scathia, page 333. Th 333. Uh, so is located in the northeast of the... Uh, continent of Astagonia, also just kind of generically known as the Western continent, the sort of, uh, to use a real world reference, kind of the European uh, inspired continent. Uh, the native tongue of Scathia is uh, based on the Old Volcari, which I mentioned earlier. Some Scathians, especially those in the southern reaches, speak Malovian, and on a rare occasion, even Korite, Dorgar, or Troll speak might be known. So there you go. Uh, the religion. Patron deity of Scathia is Signa, which I mentioned a little bit earlier. She is the goddess of the sun, spring, and hearth. The other northern gods, however, are revered here as well, including Fragner, Vraden, Jorl, and possibly other local or minor deities. Andorak is honored to some extent as well, but his sect is destructed as his sect is destructive distrusted and even disliked in Scathia due mainly to the Melodian forbidden of Signa's worship in the Winter Kingdom itself. Winter Kingdom is just another uh, epithet for uh, Melovia. Uh, so going back a little bit, so Signa, goddess of the sun, spring, and hearth. She's also uh, uh, sort of a goddess of healing and also kind of associated with inspiration as well. Although Yorl is probably the main deity that symbolizes inspiration. He's also the uh, the blacksmith god, the god um, uh, of crafting, and that's why inspiration is kind of a thing for him, too. Uh, people who craft things or, or invent things. Uh, geographically speaking, you can see that uh, Scathia is, most, is predominantly mountains. The Ice Claw Mountain, the eastern uh, Ice Claw Mountain range peters into Scathia. It doesn't quite make it all the way across the continent. Kind of dies out in 
Scathia. But um, so even though the mountains are smaller uh, here in Scathia, they're still pretty good size because the ice claws in general um, are pretty large. So I would say they are, I live here in the Appalachian Mountains in Western North Carolina, and they are, yeah, we're fairly high, but they're older mountains. They wrote it down. So they're probably about the size of the mountains here, maybe, probably a little little higher, actually, in Scathia. So um, maybe just a little bit. So or else can I tell you about geography? A um, couple of famous rivers run through here, the Ruska River, the Silver River. Um, the Giant Wood Forest uh, is kind of cool. The Giant Wood Forest is kind of, um, because I'm a fan of like, uh, names meaning two or, different, two or three different things this is another example. The giant wood is uh, called that because uh, frost giant, a lot of giants are found there, or used to be, not as much as uh, in the current age of man. Uh, but also some of the trees are gigantic, so it's kind of a double meaning. Uh, some of the trees in the middle of the forest are 350, 400 feet. I have these massive, uh, they're kind of like the redwoods of uh, California in the real world, so uh, pretty cool. Uh, then there's a Scathian calendar. Uh, the Scathian calendar, I'll just go over it really quick. The days of the week are named Sun's Day, Moon's Day, Water's Day, Fire's Day, Wind's Day, Earth's Day, and Worship Day. So there, uh, there are seven days, as you can see. Um, and some of them correlate kind of to our modern day, uh, which is sort of the point. Uh, it's called grounding your fan fantasy or having resonance. Uh, the year begins at the spring equinox, which, uh, with, uh, with each successive month being dawning, warming, winding, green moon, sun moon, fire moon, light fall, leaf fall, frost moon, snow moon, ice moon, dark moon. There you go. I don't like the names of those. So if I might say so. Some of those are quite cool. Others not so much. Uh, so yeah. Uh, the year starts with spring equinox. So that's when uh, the goddess Cigna is, is kind of coming in full bloom into her sort of main profile there. Major cities, uh, Vulcan Port is the official or old capital of Scathia, a port city of some 30,000 people. Thorvala in the north is the unofficial new capital, the seat of the, of the late Queen Hilda. Uh, queen Sunhilda is now the current queen, and who is actually a player character of my friend uh, Matt, who is also a one of the original playtesters and still plays today, which is cool. So shout out to Matt if he watches this video. That was his character. He uh, guided her up through... 13 advancements, I think. So, you know, if you're uh, comparing that, uh, 13 advancements in Savage Kingdoms to D&D, that's, that's probably 15th level D&D character? No, wait, it goes the other way. Probably 11th level character uh, for D&D. So, um, power-wise. All right. Uh, Signaheim is also a sizable town named after the patron goddess, and Ingvald and Vradenheim are notable settlements as well. Vraden is another uh, deity, somewhat lesser known, a god or goddess. Uh, none seem to know his, his or her gender, uh, if uh, he or she even has one at all, or they have one as well. So um, a god or goddess of uh, justice and uh, judgment and vengeance. Uh, let's see. White lotus is said to grow in the area sometimes. Like lotus, lotus only grows in the snow, which is kind of interesting. Deer, reindeer, elk, wolves, brown bears, bears, and white Arctic bears are fairly common in most parts of Scythia. And on occasion, trolls, frost giants, ice worms, and the great white wolves haunt the more desolate areas, sometimes wandering near towns and villages. The cave lair of a spawn of Vornathrax, the legendary ice worm, is said to exist in the northwest. As I suddenly become talking for no apparent reason with my voice. Certainly not my words. Not that good. Ah, uh, food and drink. Meat and stout ales are the preferred drinks of most Scythians, although wine imported from the south is occasionally enjoyed by the wealthy as well. Slavka is sometimes imbibed as well, an invention from Malovia. Uh, so they eat a lot of stuff like uh, a lot of um, coastal northern Scandinavians would in the real world. Um, a lot of venison and reindeer and halibut, mackerel, river pike, etc. Uh, they use a lot of blood gravy or halibut sauce. Black breads, white breads, and sweet breads are common staples, as is light-colored cheese, basically Swiss cheese. And as well as what Swiss cheese comes from, it's scathing cheese. Notable characters. Queen Sunhilda, or Sunhilda is the highest, the highest ranking of the priestess of Signa, a scarcity on uh, districts and also reigning sovereign as a realm. Uh, after the murder of Queen Hilda by Malivian assassins, like I said, that was uh, actually a player character before she became a famed NPC. 
Helga von Astater was once a powerful priestess and head witch residing in Signeheim, though some claim she was recently slain by serving a secret worm cult. That actually happened also in game. Um, Sven Eriksson, uh, Bjorn Thorixson, and we mentioned Moss Treader, which is Moss Treader is a wild she warrior, uh, also of, uh, one of my uh, playtesters uh, characters, Larry. Um, and <clears throat> so that character kind of lives on as well as mentioned in the book. Heraldry and symbology. Queen Sunhilda's um, royal heraldry is a white or silver stag on a green field, while her symbol is High Volga. Grand High Priestess, in other words, is a red sun with a golden rays on a white field. Uh, and there's some other uh, heraldry and stuff, but I won't uh, go too much into that as we are now at 30 minutes. Um, the primary enemy of Scathia is Melovia, the Winter Kingdom to the south, whose deep belief in Andorok and embrace of dark sorcery has put the two realms at odds. The occasional Thorakian raiding party from the north might can also be a problem, as can frost giants and trolls and other terrible creatures. Thrymnor, a Dorgar realm to the southwest in the Sanctuary Mountains, is an um, occasional ally, and dwarves, which is just another name for Dorgar, from that mountainous realm come to trade in Scathia or Scathia from time to time. Uh, Scathia tends to import gold, iron, exotic wood, exotic stone, ale, wine, herbs, spices, precious gems, horses, mules, and sea goods. Uh, they tend to export export silver, tin, copper, timber, leather goods, furs, mead, ale, herbs, cattle, sea goods, cold weather fish. There you go. Current uh, coinage and currency. Let's see. Most types of coinage are accepted in Scathia, if only, if only based on weight and quality, although some Scathian merchants refuse Malavian coins, just on principle. Uh, Scathian, uh, Scathia produces a silver coin called a Valka and a copper piece worth about as much as most bronze coins, uh, just to keep it easy, known as an Inga. Trade and barter, however, and oath givings are still fairly common in the realm, particularly in the smaller towns and villages. So trade and barter still exist. Uh, oath giving is just a fancy word for, you know, a promise. So uh, if you can give me this today, I promise I will pay you whatever in two days or something like that. So and if you're an honorable person, uh, people will trust you to do that. So it's uh, how old fashioned credit used to work. Um, the winters in Scathia can be challenging with heavy snows, especially in the north and icy rains and will last for at least four months. Uh, the summers here are quite pleasant, but they're fairly short in length. They're only about two, two and a half months. Um, let's see, what else can I tell you? Sea winds blow in from the Dragon Sea and Bay of Ravens, but overall, uh, they are mild, only producing occasional squall or maelstrom. Um, okay, as we're about to wrap up, I'll do a couple of these. Common customs, so common customs in Scathia. Only Scathian women are permitted to become priestesses of Signa, young maidens be beginning as lay priestesses called hearth maidens. Uh, the current High Volga, Volga of Signa usually becomes the Queen of Scathia, so I already went over that, but it's not always been the case. Uh, what else? Gi uh, uh, Scathian boys once, uh, once had to either spend three nights in the giant wood or atop one of the highest peaks of the Ice Claws, and if they returned alive, they would be considered full warriors within the village or tribe. So they'd survive three nights out there. They don't do this practice quite as much in Scathia as they used to, but uh, some still do. Uh, it's literally, next sentence literally says that this is no longer, no longer done quite as often, save for some of the towns in the more northern regions of the kingdom. Uh, let's see. Many southern Malovians have garlic, silver, or... Why is this Malovian section in here? I don't know. Oh, okay. It's, oh, all right, I see. Uh, it's a, so some Scathians near the border of Malovia do, do the same thing, where they have the, um, hang garlic or, uh, mistletoe or cold iron charms above the door to keep uh, vampires out, but also werewolves and perhaps dark fairy creatures as well. In elder times, troll-born children were once thrown into the sea or burned at the stake by many Scathians. But in more present times, uh, present times, such children are more often given over to the Temple of Signa for care. Uh, Scathian merchants often refuse Malabian coins, sometimes even goods, and consider it a blessing from the gods when a Dorgar caravan is in town. Death magic or sorcery is, is uh, death magic or uh, death sorcery is trusted by few, or sorcery in general is trusted by few Scathians whose only tolerance tolerance of magic craft is generally only through a rune caster or a priestess of Signa. Always a good thing, good thing to keep. Some I think sometimes players don't. They're so used to D and D they don't uh, role play some of those aspects that uh, magic is not always very trustworthy unless it's something from your culture and and even then it's like a, uh, only a traduct. Uh, uh, trusted tradition, which is usually like a priesthood or something. Common sayings, may the sun rise and fall, Signa ward you from darkness, 
as black as a raven and as white as a lotus. May your heart be as warm as your hearth. Even winter has its season. Right. The last one meaning even winter has its season, meaning that uh, it's almost biblical, like this this too will pass. This bad moment will even pass. As black as the raven, as white as the lotus, uh, meaning uh, the contrast is very different. It's very obvious. May the sun rise and fall, meaning may time continue, may the cycle continue. So signal word you from darkness is probably more obvious. So signal protect you. And I think that's gone about do it at 35 minutes. Well done, I think. Um, so if you made it to the end, congratulations. You're one of probably five people that'll watch this thing, but I'll just keep doing them. Like I said, just to have them as an archive in the very least. So uh, the next, that finishes, um, well, it doesn't finish the series. I got Thrakian to go. So the next, the last one in the, the human cultures of Astagonia will be apparently the Thraki or Thrakians. Uh, so I'll do that at some point, hopefully next week or two, probably a couple of weeks. Uh, and then I'll probably cover the non-humans of Astagonia, non-human realms like Kalindaril and Lithalor and uh, Olderac and Thromnor, etc. And then I'll be on to the Savage East when the book comes out. All right. Anyway, thanks, guys. Thanks for paying attention. Like, subscribe, share, and all that stuff. And I will talk to you again soon.